The wreckage of Armenian artillery strewn across the barren mountainscapes where Armenia and Azerbaijan edge closer to all-out war. Fighting talk to match the tensions across the most heavily militarized front line in Europe. This land is ours and will remain as such. We will fight for our lands until the end, and we will liberate our lands from occupation. In the Armenian capital, Yerevan, the view among volunteers we meet about the disputed territory of Nagorno-Karabakh is just as hardline. Do you think there is a possibility for compromise? For compromise? I mean, uh, of course there is a possibility for compromise, but this is our home and we won't give our home. There is, if they want a part of our home, there will be no compromise and we'll go, we will go to the end. These supplies will go to the army and to the internally displaced. Chocolate and cigarettes for the troops, more basic essentials for the refugees. There was a four-day flare-up in 2016. These volunteers have been here for four days already, though, and it looks like they'll have to stay a lot longer, not least because of Turkey's involvement this time round. Ankara making it quite clear that they will stand by Azerbaijan militarily as far as Baku chooses to go. We meet a family fled to Yerevan from the town of Shushi in Nagorno-Karabakh. The children thrilled with the bicycle that kind-hearted neighbours have given them. Elvira Hakobyan fled her home before, in the war in the early 1990s. She hopes she'll be back soon. I put it this way. Who is the Turkish government to take away our lands? That's our land, and we never give them our land. We are always ready to fight, and we will always win. France, Russia and the United States called today for an immediate ceasefire and urged the warring parties to come to the table. They also raised their concerns over reports of Syrian mercenaries brought in by Turkey to support Azerbaijan. Minsk America. Given that the three Minsk countries, USA, Russia and France, have neglected this problem for nearly 30 years, it is unacceptable that they are now involved in a search for a ceasefire in the face of these negative developments that came to surface in recent days. In the town of Martouni, two journalists working for the French newspaper Le Monde were badly wounded in an Azerbaijani strike. One of them is in critical condition. The Azeris blaming Armenia for bringing journalists into the conflict zone. A sign of just how dangerous things are in what, till five days ago, was a forgotten conflict. Diana Magne, Sky News, Yerevan, Armenia.